Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Kevin Wright, and we're getting ready for Bible study on Wednesday evening. Amen. I mean, you guys are ready for Bible study. Amen. Now, just a few announcements before we uh, get started. Don't forget, we started our Daniel 10-day fast. And again, that's from January 17th through the 26th. How I many you guys are doing pretty good on your fast? That's right. I can hear a few of y'all saying, what fast, Pastor? Now, there you go. There you go. Amen. Remember, we sent these brochures out, and we gave them away at our in-person church service as well. Amen. So we are on our Daniel 10-day fast. Now, if, if you forgot about it, well, you can start today. That's right. Don't get in bondage. Amen. Praise God. You know, fast and don't move God. But it gets you in position to receive from God. Amen. Yeah. So what matters the most is what's in your heart. Amen. So yeah. you can start today if you forgot all about it. Again, it's January 17th through uh, the 26th. Now, I want to encourage you as well, while you're fasting, of course, and praying, you know, we also have our nice manual here called Winning in Life. You know, I wrote this manual just for our congregation and supporters. Yeah. Amen. It's an outstanding manual, and you can use this right during your fast, confessing scriptures and finding out who you are in Christ. And, you know, in fact, some of the subjects there, let me put my little glasses on, amen, amen. praise God, amen. are uh, healing, yeah. long life, how to deal with COVID-19. That's right. Mm -hmm. We got scriptures for COVID-19. How about the local church? How to pray for the local church, the body of Christ, prosperity, the Lord of the harvest. How to pray for the nation of Israel. Amen. Protection, marriage, how to let go of the past, identity in Christ, trust the Lord, your children, how to have peaceful sleep. Some of you probably need that one right there. You maybe you haven't been sleeping that much because, you know, of the pandemic and all the things that have come upon this earth. So many different things are going on. Every time you turn the news on, it's always something going on. And some of us have had some problems with sleeping. So we got confessions on that. Amen. Praise God. And uh, and we just want to encourage you to, to use this while you're on your fast. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it will be beneficial to you. Again, uh, do well on your Daniel 10-day fast. Amen. I know you guys are doing well. Amen. Praise God. Don't get in bondage if you messed up. Let me talk to those of you that may have messed up. So we've already talked to those who perhaps forgot about the Daniel 10-day fast. But how about those maybe who slipped up and, and you know, and ate a big steak or something like that? You know, I don't know. Amen. I'm picking. I'm just picking with you. And you said, oh, man, I forgot about that fast. That's okay. Don't get in bondage. Start today or start in the morning. Amen. So don't forget about that. Our next in-person church service will be Sunday, February the 6th. Our next in-person church service will be Sunday, February the 6th. Amen. At 11 o'clock a.m. Not 10 o'clock, but at 11 o'clock. Say that. 11 o'clock. Say it again. 11 o'clock a.m. And we'll be at our new site. Woohoo! Glory to God at our new site, our site. Not just a site to, to lease or to rent. No, our new site. And that will be 136 Byron Parkway. 136 Byron Parkway. And that's in Byron, Mississippi. Amen. And don't forget, we will always still be doing Facebook Live. Amen. Praise God. We still will be doing Facebook Live. Some people might not be ready to come back yet for whatever reason. So we will always do Facebook Live. And in fact, since we started Facebook Live, man, we're ministering to a whole lot more people than we have ever ministered to. Man, we're in the thousands now of people who are listening in or who will play back, etc. So, you know, our, our outreach has doubled, tripled, you know, and it's just such a blessing. Also, don't forget the effect of February 1. Effect of February 1, we will be conducting in-person church services twice a month. That's right, every first Sunday and every second Sunday. Starting in February, 
we will start conducting in-person church services twice a month. That's on the first and second Sunday of each month. And yes, we will keep Facebook Live for those of you who are not quite ready or some of you that you are ready. I mean, maybe, you, maybe you're sick a little bit. Who knows? And maybe you just didn't feel like attending church, but we will always be on Facebook Live. So, so you don't want to forget about that in the name of Jesus. What did you say, honey? I said you got people from all over states. And yeah, you got people outside of Mississippi that's watching now. I've been telling you guys that, you know, we got people all over the place that's watching us on Facebook Live. So our outreach has extended beyond the state of Mississippi. That's what I'm telling you guys. So, amen. Praise God. Well, let's pray and let's get right into the word of God. Heavenly Father, once again, we do count it the honor and the privilege to get into your word. And Father, we thank you that as we get in your word, that your word will come alive. And Father, we just thank you today for the great teacher among us, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us into all truth. And Lord, we thank you for the anointing that comes to lift burdens and to destroy every yoke. And Father, we just thank you right now that your word is powerful, it's quick, and it's alive. And Father, we just thank you that it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And Lord, we just thank you today that the listeners' ears are accurately anointed to receive your word, Father, that they'll not be hearers only, but they'll be hearers and doers of your word. So Father, we just thank you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11. Amen. Praise God. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11. And let's pick up at verse 12. Of course, this was our text scripture. We're still on the subject of a spiritual uprising. A spiritual uprising. Of course, we're talking about the body of Christ. We are, uh, there is an uprising of the body of Christ that's taken forth in these last days. Amen. And how I many know it's very important that we start to uprise and we start to take our rightful place of where God wants us to be. Now notice here in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11 and verse 12, it says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Well, notice here, you know, in light of where we are at today and all the different things that's been going on, COVID-19, and then if you turn on the news, you know, you got several stations you can turn on. It just seemed like, man, our nation has gone through so much. Not just our nation, but the entire world. Overseas, I mean, it's just a mess. You got earthquakes, you got tsunamis, you got one ethnic group against the other ethnic group, and you got the coronavirus going on. Not just coronavirus, you still got all of them other pandemics going on in this world. I mean, all kinds of sicknesses, all kinds of things are happening right now. And you know, we kind of been talking about that because we're living in the last days, amen? In fact, we're living in the last of the last days. Uh, the Apostle Paul called them perilous times. And those are times in which we live. And you know, Paul listed multiple things that would happen in these last days. And that's exactly what's going on. And, and so, you know, even though the world has got an uprising and the world is wide open, gone crazy, tell you something. It's time for the body of Christ to rise up and take its rightful place. Yeah. Now, reading from the Amplified Classic, it says, and from the days of John the Baptist until this present time, the kingdom of heaven has endured violent assaults, and violent man sees it by force as a precious prize, a share in the heavenly kingdom is sought with most ardent zeal and intent exertion. Another translation put it this way, and from the time of John the Baptist began preaching up until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing. I like that. Has been forcefully advancing, meaning fight the good fight of faith. And violent people are attacking it. Now notice what another translation said. From the moment John the Baptist stepped on the scene up until now, the realm of heaven's kingdom is bursting forth and passionate people have taken hold wow. of its power. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. And again, the, the type of violence that we're talking about, you know, 
How many of you know that we are no match for the devil physically? That's right. We are no match for the devil physically. That's why we're in a spiritual warfare. You must deal with the devil with spiritual weapons. Amen. Again, we're not talking about the violence like we see in this world. You know, people fighting in the street, burning down buildings and robbing stores and killing each other and cold blood. No, we're not talking about that. In fact, that type of violence does not bring the kind of change that we want. I'm talking about believers latching on to God's will and refusing to let go. Hallelujah. The kind of uprising that brings real change. Hallelujah. You know, the scripture says, I will not let anything, I won't let nothing separate me from the love of God. I won't let coronavirus stop me from going to church. No, no, no. Why? The church is essential. Without the church, guys, this world will be in a hot mess. No, we need the church. Yeah, we need the church. We need the church more than football games. <laughs> I guess the football games are essential. Well, we need the church, guys. Let me tell you, if the church should ever leave this planet, and that day is going to come. When Jesus comes back for his church, his second coming, let me tell you, when the church leave here, you're going to see how important the church is. If you left around here for the tribulation, you're going to find out real quick, oh, Lord, we need the church back. Yeah, that's why blessed are those who take part in the first rapture. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But the church is essential. But when the church is rising up and taking their rightful place, they won't let nothing separate them from the love of God. I'm telling you, it's time for us to take back what the devil has stolen from us. It's time for us to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. And also with this uprising, I believe uh, we need to stir up some spiritual lessons uh, that we have laid aside and neglected. That's what I mean by a spiritual uprising. That we need to start stirring up some of them old lessons. How about angels? When the last time you heard a sermon on angels or mm -hmm. confession, yeah. death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yeah. How about the authority of the believer? Yeah. How about the righteousness of God? Oh, I mean, those God. are subjects you yeah. just barely hear anymore. Uh -huh. You know, there's no messages on faith. Yeah. No, but see, in this spiritual uprising, we need to stir up all them old sermons. Come on, them old teachers. We need to stir that up. And that's the day in which we live in that we're stirring up those basic fundamental truths. Amen. And when it says to stir up the gift, it's talking about reigniting or fanning the flame. Fan the flame. Stir this stuff up. And that's the day in which we live in. It's time for the body of Christ to rise up. Amen. Take his rightful place in the name of Jesus. So, you know, we talked about the last days, perilous time. We talked about that. Also, we talked about last week, stir up the gift of God. Yeah. Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And let's take a look at verse 6. Notice here, Paul writing to the young pastor, Timothy. He said, wherefore, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou do what? Stir up. Ooh, glory to God. Yeah. Stir up the gift of God. I mean, stir up. Come on. Stir up like you're stirring up that batter when you're baking a cake or whatever, cornbread or whatever it might be. You're stirring up. Stir. Well, Paul told Timothy to stir up the gift. And if you look up that word stir, it means to wake up. Wake up. It means to reignite or fan the flame. I like that. Glory. Fan the flame. You know, when you're starting a fire, off the time when you get to a certain point, when you see that little spark, you start fanning it a little bit. Why? You're trying to get it to catch on fire. You're trying to reignite it. You're trying to stir that thing up. Well, that's what Paul told Timothy. Stir up, reignite, wake up the gift. Wow. The Amplified put it this way about 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. He said, that's why I remind you, Paul said, to fan into flame the gracious gift of God. That inner fire, that special endowment which is in you. I like that. Yeah. That that inner fire. Stir up that inner fire. Oh, the prophet said it's like fire shut up in my bone. He says, stir up that fire, that special endowment yeah. which is in you through the laying on of hand. Yeah. The Amplified Classic put it this way. 
That is why I remind you to stir up, rekindle the embers. Ooh, I like that. Fan the flame. Keep burning. Oh, let's stop right there. Uh, Paul said, Timothy, keep burning. Uh, I got a question for you. Are you on fire for Jesus? I said, are you on fire for Jesus? He said, fan the flame. Keep burning the gracious gift of God. The inner fire that's on the inside of you. <clears throat> then you go over there to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Let's go back because we're right next door. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14. Notice what Paul also tells Timothy. So he told Timothy to do what? Stir up the gift. Huh? Wake it up. Fan the flame. Come on. Then he goes on, note there, 1 Timothy 4, verse 14, he said, neglect not the gift. Underline that. So he says, stir up the gift. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, that was given thee by prophecy on land on hell of the presbytery. Note that, neglect not. Stir up. Neglect not. <laughs> neglect. Don't walk away from. The Living Bible put it this way. It said, be sure to use the gift that God has given you. Wow. Woo be sure to use the gifts. And we're going to talk about the gifts in just a moment. In just a moment. Be sure to use them gifts that God has given you. Mm -hmm. God has uh, placed within you gifts and anointings and talents. He said, be sure to use them. Yeah. The Amplified Classic put it this way. That was directly, I like this part, part B of that verse said, that was directly given unto you by the Holy Ghost. Wow. The Holy Ghost personally gave you, he gave you them gifts. Wow. You hear me? Yeah. The Holy Ghost personally, he directly gave you those gifts. We're going to talk about them more in just a minute. You got to understand this about Timothy. Timothy had a gift from God. And as you read through the book of Timothy, 1st and 2nd Timothy, you find out that he had a gift to teach. He had a gift to pastor a church. He had a gift to exhort and warn and to do the work of an evangelist. Yeah. And the Apostle Paul was encouraging Timothy, Timothy, don't neglect your giftings. You go over there to 2nd Timothy chapter 4. Let's go over there for a moment, 2nd Timothy chapter 4. Verse 2, yeah, these are Timothy's giftings. He said, Paul told him, verse 2, chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, preach the word, boy. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come, and those are days in which we live, y'all. For the time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine. Is that not where we live today? Yes. People are not enduring sound doctrine. But after their own lust and inordinate desire. That's what lust is. And inordinate desire. Shall they heap to themselves teachers having what? Itching ears. You know when I think about the itching ears. You know how you pull your ear and you're itching it sometimes. You're itching it. This is how some of the baby Christians are. They always trying to hear something new. They got itching ear. Always trying to get a word. And, and then a lot of times it ain't even a word from the Lord. It's not even a word from the scriptures. They just always trying to get something new. And you ain't even learned how to do the old yet. And that's why Paul says stir up the gift. Go back and stir up some of them old teachings and lessons that you have learned you got to learn those because you hear it one time don't mean you know it. Because you hear it two times don't mean you know it. Because you hear it three times don't mean you know it. He said, go back and stir all that up. Yes. But notice what he said in verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. We, we live in that day. People don't want to hear the truth. And they shall be turned to, to what? Fables. <laughs> but verse 5 said, but watch thou in all things. Be watchful. Endure afflictions. You're going to make it through the coronavirus. You're going to make it endure afflictions. Or how people treat you. Do the work of what? An evangelist. And make what? 
full proof of thy ministry. Yeah. So you see, Timothy had all sorts of giftings, praise God. Hallelujah. And, and Paul was trying to tell him to do what? Stir up the gift. He said, stir up the gift. Then he, he went on to say what? Neglect not them gifts. Now note this. Roughly over 40 years ago, <clears throat> enormous emphasis was placed upon spiritual gifts. It was the beginning of the charismatic revival <clears throat> renewal movement. That's right. It was the beginning of the charismatic renewal movement. Mm -hmm. Now notice here, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And that's why it's so very important to emphasize and whatever you teach on, one thing I learned about Brother Hagin, he said, whatever you continue to teach on is what's going to come for it. You teach on healing, you said people get healed. Why? Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that's why in, in certain circles or just Christians, nah, believers or churches, the reason why some people don't see healings or uh, or, or, or take part of healing it's because they don't hear about healing why some churches don't experience healings at their church because they never teach on it Romans 10 17 so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God whatever you teach on you will create faith for it to come to pass so it's very important that you teach on the different gifts praise God now notice there in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and let's take a look at verse 7. It says, but the manifestations of the Spirit, now note this, note this, it's very important. But the manifestation of the Spirit, here we're taking a look at the gifts of the Spirit. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to who? Is given to who? Every man. Learn a lesson now. Learn a lesson. Let me slow down. Ah. Let me slow down. Because some people ain't never heard teachings on the, the gifts of the Spirit. Neither have they heard on the fruit of the Spirit. Okay? So now we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Okay. Watch this. But the manifestation or the gifts being in operation. Okay? The manifestation of the Spirit is given to who? Every, Every man. To do what? Profit with all. Every man, not just the fivefold ministry gifts, you know, the prophet, the what evangelist, pastor, teacher, etc. No, not just given to the fivefold ministry gift, but is given to every man. Come on now, see some you got stuck right there. That's right. You thought that, come on now, these spiritual gifts were strictly for the fivefold ministry gifts or the ministers and preachers at the church. No! Read your Bible. Verse 7 says what? The manifestation of the Spirit is given to who? Every man to do what? To profit. Profit means to gain, to move forward. Mm -hmm. Watch this. The Holy Spirit can manifest any one of these gifts through any believer any time he wants to do so. You need to jot that down. The Holy Spirit can manifest any one of these gifts that we're going to read in just a moment. Through any believer, anytime he wants to do something. Now, for the record, for the record, I believe that more emphasis, for the record, I believe that more emphasis need to be put on the fruit of the Spirit than the gifts of the Spirit. I'm going to tell you why in just a moment. For the record, I believe that more emphasis, I didn't say we didn't need, we didn't need to talk about the gifts. Come on now, I understand, and we're going to talk more about the gifts in just a second. Uh, amen. The, the gifts of the Spirit are very important. But I believe that more emphasis need to be put on the fruit of the Spirit than the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, how and where do I draw that conclusion? Go to 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Pastor, where you get that from now? Woo! Word of not. Word of with. Woo! Prophecy. All right, watch yourself now. Let's see what the scripture. I'm not interested in what man or woman got to say. What is the scripture saying? 
Are y'all with me? Amen. So my point was what? That we need to emphasize more about what? The fruit of the Spirit than gift. Watch this. Verse, verse 1. Notice here, Paul writing to the church of Corinth. He said, though I speak with tongues of men, come on, and of angels, and have not charity, word gape mean love, I am become as a what? Sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Uh -huh. And though I have the gift of prophecy, see, now we're getting into what? The gifts of the spirit, right? Uh -huh. He said, even though you may have the gift of prophecy and you understand all mysteries and all knowledge, you're getting into them gifts. The spiritual gifts here. And, and though I have all faith, come on now, mm -hmm. spiritual gifts here, yeah. special faith. You, you can have all that so that I could remove mountains. But if I ain't got love, come on, watch yourself. Oh, I ain't got nothing. You still don't have nothing. Even if you're falling in the gifts of the spirit. If you don't have love. Why? Because you understand faith working by love. That's it. That's it. The gifts won't work correctly and properly apart from love. Mm -hmm. The motivation's got to be love. Not so you can make somebody think that you're a big shot. No, you'll get over to other things that you ought not to be. Let's put it that way. You'll get over to the spirit of suspicion. Ain't no discerning no spirit. You over into the discerning. Right. <laughs> the spirit of suspicion. Right. You got to be careful because see the devil will accommodate you. See, uh, see, oftentimes the gifts of the spirit. Let me tell you, they are prompted and stirred up by you walking in the fruit of the spirit. You know how, as you read over there in the Gospels, how it says, "And Jesus was moved with compassion, and he healed their sick." And Jesus was moved with compassion and he fed the 5,000. And Jesus was moved, see, see, fruit came first. Ah, I'm going to let y'all do some thinking right now. Let me let y'all, some of you preachers and ministers, read your Bible. Jesus moved with compassion, then all of a sudden, yes. the gifts of the Spirit went into operation. When he was moved with compassion, certain things began to happen. Spirit of faith. Tongues interpretation. See, the gifts that start happening if you flow and operate in the fruit. Yeah. Problem is, you got a lot of folk not operating in the fruit, and so they making up stuff in the spirit. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful. I said you got to be careful. Now, we're not making light of the gifts of the spirit, no. Yeah. In fact, there are nine gifts of the spirit. Jot that down. There are nine gifts of the spirit. And each one of these gifts are power gifts. Each one of these gifts, there's nine gifts of the Spirit, and each one of these gifts are power gifts. Man, they're like torpedoes, man. <laughs> and they are direct. Yeah. They're supernatural and miraculous manifestations of the Spirit. So each one of these gifts are power gifts. They are direct and supernatural and miraculous manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Now turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and let's take a look at them. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. Let's take a look at the gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul said what to Timothy? Stir up the gifts. Let's go back. Come on, back to Timothy. Remember, he said stir up the gifts. Don't neglect the gifts. Come on now. Mm -hmm. There are many different gifts. There's about 18 gifts. Come on, that comes from the Holy Spirit, not just, just the nine power. You, you, you can't just go for power and ain't got no fruit. Pastor, you teaching real good. Most of us just claim the power gifts and ain't got no fruit. Oh boy, here we go. First Corinthians 12, verse seven. Let's take a look at the nine gifts of the Spirit. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. First one. For to one is given what? The Spirit of the Word of Wisdom. To another, the Word of Knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith, a special faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing. Yeah. Woo! I'll take that, Pastor. Woo, Jesus. Word of wisdom. Lord, I'll take that. Come on now. Yeah. Oh, prophecy. Woo! Well, I'll take that. Boy, we jump for the gifts of the 
spirit, but don't want nothing to do with the fruit. Well, let's keep reading. To another, the working of miracles. Woo! Woo! I'll take the miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. But watch verse 11. But all these worketh the one and the self same spirit. Come on. Dividing to every man. Dividing to what? Every man severally as he will. So these gifts go into operation as the Holy Spirit will, uh, not as you will. Uh -huh. Not as you will. I heard Brother Hagin say something once that, oh, while we was at Bible school, man, it shook up the whole student body. That was a couple thousand students from all over the world. It took us all up. He said 90% well, let's just drop down so I won't be evangelistic, evangelistically speaking. But I really do believe he said 90%, but I'm going to drop it down to 80, okay? okay. He said 80% of the tongue of interpretation he hear in prophecy are nothing but flesh. Oh, my I said, Lord, have mercy. Oh, so now I wasn't just thinking about other folk. Hey, I even thought about myself. Every now and then, throw up a little prophecy or a little word of knowledge or something like that. You know, I, I automatically thought about myself. Wasn't really interested in other people trying to get other people straightened out. I was thinking about myself. Okay, like, oh boy, I got to make sure I'm hearing from God. And I want to let you know that too, minister, pastor, evangelist, prophet. You make sure you're hearing from God. Make sure you're hearing from God because it's as the Spirit wills. That's why you got to be so careful. Well, spirit ain't willing. I'm moving anyway. Oh, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. I heard Brother Hagin say something once. He said, uh, he said this man came to him and, and he was talking about the prophecy and all that. He was teaching on that. And this other preacher came up to him and said, hey, Brother Hagin, I got something that ain't, you can't even find it in the Bible. Brother Edgar said, well, you too far out for me, buddy. <laughs> what? Because let me tell you, see, the Holy Spirit, let me tell you, agrees with the word. You'll be getting the word where you can find it. Anytime you get a word, hear me, y'all, because let me tell you, there's some folk out here, ministers and preachers and all that, that'll mess your head up, mess your life up. If it don't line up with the word of God, leave it alone. Come on. Spirit and the word are one. Spirit ain't going to say something that's separate from the word. Uh, is that not what the Holy Spirit said? He said, I will not speak of myself, but only that which the Father give me. Right? Right? Is that not what the scripture said? So how are you going to tell me the Holy Spirit is saying something that is that does not line up with the word of God? Saying stuff that ain't got nothing to do with what the Father has said. Right. You got to follow the word of God. And you better make sure that you got somebody there to judge it. That's why when people try to give you a word, hey, I'm right there to judge it. I remember somebody tried to give my wife a word yeah. at the beauty salon. Sure. And boy, they, did, they messing with the wrong gal. <laughs> they messing with the wrong believer. My wife looked at her and said, that is not in the word of God. I don't receive it, and that's wrong. That's false. Oh, that's shut up, big fat mouth. See, but some of you don't have uh, 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 that zeal and, and, and that, you know, boy, what, what can I call that? Man, you got to correct folk. Okay? Boldness. That's the word I'm looking for. You got to have that Holy Ghost boldness to judge what they're saying. Now, I've heard people who have given me prophecy and all that, and I said, okay, praise God. That lines up with the word of God. I receive that. I'm just letting you know I'm, I'm judging you, not judging you, but I'm judging you based on the word of God. Does it line up with the word of God? So you got to be careful, people, trying to give you a word, and it does. you can't find it nowhere in the Bible. Like that man gave Brother Hagin. He said, oh, I got something that you can't find in the Bible. And that brother Hagin said, oh, no, you're too far off from me, buddy. See, when people start getting away from the word, look out. Go the other way. Get out of there. Because they can say one word and mess your whole life up. I don't know how many times I've heard folk giving women a word about who their husband going to be. 
and they wound up getting hitched up to somebody that was a nut or a man married a woman. Shoot, they on the honeymoon night, they get to the hotel, her head starts spinning around, spitting up green mess. I mean, you got to be careful. You doing all this stuff based on somebody giving you a word, you make sure it lines up with the word of God. Amen. That's why I say we need to put a lot more emphasis on the fruit of the Spirit, not just the gifts of the Spirit. Everything has got to come from the heart of compassion. That's why we read 1 Corinthians 13. He said, I don't care. Paul said, I don't care. You got the gift of faith, prophecy, and all this. But if you ain't got love, you ain't got nothing, my brother. You just a tickling symbol. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I know I just said a mouthful. So since we're talking about stirring up the gifts of the Spirit, <laughs> we might as well clean house. And man, let's stir up also. I think Paul wasn't just telling him to stir up the spiritual gifts, uh, Sister Leslie. I believe he's telling him, stir up all some of the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> amen. I said, amen. In fact, let's start out with Mark's Gospel, chapter 12. You need to start with the fruit before you get to the gifts. I'm going to tell you, the gifts ain't come to you either until you walk in compassion, walk in the love of God. Your faith will not work without love. Faith worketh by love. Thank God. Read your Bible. Start with the Gospels there. Jesus would move with compassion and things start happening. The gifts of the Spirit begin to go in operation, man. Why? He was motivated by, motivated by compassion, motivated by the love of God. Mm -hmm. Let me show you. Let me give you a foundation for all this. Mark's Gospel, chapter 12. And let's see. Mark 12. Okay, I'm not there. Verse 29. Yes, and and Jesus God. answered him. Mm -hmm. Well, let's back it up. Verse 28. Verse 28. Mark 12, verse 28. And one of the scribes came, having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked them, which is, which is the first commandment of all? Watch verse 29. Jesus answered him and said, first of all, the commandment is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Verse 30. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt hear the two commandments. Number one was what? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all thy strength. That is what? The first commandment. Let's keep reading. Verse 31. And the second is like this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. These two right here. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, Galatians chapter 5. Amen. Amen. It's good teaching, y'all. Good teaching. Galatians chapter 5. So since we already there, we talked about the nine gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Now, and Paul was telling Timothy, listen here, young pastor. He was a great pastor and all that. He said, now, you need to stir up them gifts. You need to reignite these gifts. You need to set ablaze this special endowment that I've given you. Not only was he given the gifts of the Spirit, come on now, but also they're the nine what? Fruit of the Spirit. There's nine fruits of the Spirit. So in total, 18. That's a lot of gifting going on. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Amen. A lot of fruits and gifts here. All right. Galatians 5 verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. No, whoa. I don't hear you screaming and yelling. Oh, uh, no. I don't hear you yelling. Now, when I said the gift of prophecy, you said, hey! Hey! Come on. Tongues and interpretation. Oh! Come on. Word of knowledge. Oh! Come on now. Man, you was making some noise. Now we're talking about fruit. Come on. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Come on. Hey! <laughs> Joy. Oh! <laughs> Peace. Love, suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Watch this. 
Amen. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh, defections and the lusts. If we live in the spirit, we should also what? Walk in the spirit. Come on. Now, notice here, the nine fruits of the spirit are for character building. Oh boy. There's that word. Now remember the nine gifts of the spirit were what? Power gifts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the nine fruit of the spirit is what? Character building. So we chase it after power, but ain't got no character. Uh. <laughs> Let me say it again. You chase it after power, but you ain't got no character. Mm -hmm. I submit to you, you stay walking in the fruit. You have character, the power will come. Now, if you put these 18 giftings together, the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the believer will become a powerhouse for the Lord. Yes. Man, you'll become a powerhouse for the Lord. I said you'll become a powerhouse for the Lord. Man, if you are stirring up them gifts, the nine gifts of the Spirit, glory to God, yes. the nine fruits of the Spirit, you start stirring that thing up like Paul. Stir up them gifts, stir them up. Man, you'll become a powerhouse for God. That's good. These are grace-giving gifts. Yeah. Every believer gifts matter. You need to jot that down. Every believer's gift matter. Mm -hmm. Every believer possesses the Holy Spirit's giving gifts that is to be used for the body of Christ and the local church. These giftings are not just for you, not just for you, but it is for the body of Christ and the local church. It makes your existence, hear me? Then jot this down. When you're operating and stirring these gifts of the Spirit up, the fruit of the Spirit up, listen, it makes your existence more meaningful and important to the body of Christ and to the church. It makes your existence more meaningful mm -hmm. and important to the body of Christ and the church. God wants us to activate our giftings. Not just the gifts of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit as well. But you notice something I've been noticing. Yeah, you got some Christians, they can see everybody else's giftings but their own. You're this and you're that, but what about you? And then you got some believers, they just feel unappreciated. Some of them feel lonely and left out of the body of Christ and the church. Now, you might not be called into the fivefold ministry gifts, but that does not mean that your gift doesn't matter. Your purpose. Come on. Hallelujah. For some of you, your gifting might be intercession. It might be encouraging other believers. Come on. It could be the gift of hospitality or the gift of liberality in stewardship. See, nobody else can make the contribution that you make. Nobody else. You hear me? Nobody else can make the contribution that you nobody make. Nobody else. You're unique. Yes. But here's the big thing. When you don't exercise your gift, it weakens the church. When you don't exercise your gift, it weakens the church. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. So we're talking about there's many different types of gifts. You got gifts of the Spirit, right? Then you got the fruit of the Spirit. Then you have your own personal gift. Your purpose of why God created you. When you hold back that anointing and that special endowment, that the Holy Spirit gave you. Mm -hmm. Not alone the fruit of the Spirit, not alone the gifts of the Spirit, but when you hold back even your talents and your anointings, it weakens the church. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 16. It said, from whom the whole, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, Underline every joint supply. That simply means the body of Christ will experience increase when everybody bring their own supply of the anointing to the table. Yes. 
Yes. Let me say it again. The body of Christ will, as we'll read here, will experience increase when everybody bring their own supply of the anointing to the table. Yes. Verse 16 again, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supply, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, underline it, every point, every part rather, every part, so every joint supply of every part, What's the next word? Make it increase. Woo-wee. Make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself yes. and love. Mm. <laughs> Glory to God. See, every joint supply makes the church, makes the body of Christ stronger when every joint supply. Though you may not have an official role in the local church, there is none of us without a gift or calling. All of us have been gifted and we've all been called by God. And one last scripture, Romans chapter 11. Oh, y'all got some good teaching tonight. Good stuff, sir. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. Come on, now you might not be, you called to be a pastor, or assistant pastor, youth pastor and all that, but let me tell you, None of us is without, none of us is without a gifting or calling. That's good, sir. Everybody's important. Yes, sir. Everybody is important. Yes, sir. And when you bring, hear me, hear me carefully. I'm about to close. When you bring your supply of the anointing to the table, it causes the body of Christ to experience. It causes the church to to experience supernatural increase. Now, when you hold back, then the church lacks and the church will go without. But when we all bring our own supply of the anointing to the table, whoo, it causes the church to increase. Yeah. Well, Pastor, I'm just tired of everything. I ain't bringing my supply. I don't think I got a supply. I'm tired of my supply. No, listen, Romans chapter 11. Verse 29, you must remember this, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. You can't go back. You can't draw back. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. And that's why Paul told Timothy, ladies and gentlemen, neglect not your gift. He said, stir it up. And don't neglect it. So the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. I got one final word for you. Do not neglect your gift. That's good. Continue That's good. to stir up the gift of God. Why? So that we can continue to experience a spiritual uprising in these last days from believers such as yourself. Yes. God bless you. Amen. Glory to well, God. I trust that you got something from yes, that sir. teaching. Amen. Yes, sir. Perhaps there might be someone that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If that's you this evening and you've never confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord, you know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, uh, then thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I would like to say, I would like to do a special prayer with you today. I'd like to pray with you. Amen. I'm going to encourage you to pray along with me, and I'm going to encourage everybody else to pray along with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, I just heard in your word. I just heard in your word. You said, Lord, you said, Lord, if I confess with my mouth, if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord, and if I believe in my heart, and if I believe in that my God heart, raised you from the dead, God raised you from on the, the third day, day, on the third day, you said, Lord, you said, Lord, I'll be born again. I'll be born again. So right now, Lord, so right now, I turn from my old ways, I from my and I look ways. to you now, Lord. And I look to you now, Lord. Lord, right now, Lord, I confess right now. with my mouth, I 
that Jesus is right now my Lord, Savior, and Master. My Lord, Savior, and, Master. and I believe in my heart in that my heart God raised you from the dead on the third day. I call upon you now, Lord. Come, you into Come into my Make life. Make something wonderful, Make something wonderful out, of out of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen, amen. 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 Praise, Praise God. God. Hallelujah. Man, we're so excited for you. Amen. Woohoo! Man, we're excited. You're now born again. Now, now that you're born again, where do I go from here, Pastor? What am I supposed to do? I'm glad you asked. I wrote a little book here called Where Do I Go From Here? Your Next Steps After Making a Decision for Jesus Christ. And we want to get this book into your hands because it's going to help to disciple you. It's going to help to mentor you and coach you, amen, as you found this new way of living. Mm -hmm. Now, how do I get this book? We're going to encourage you to go to our website at newbeginningsplurallc.org. Again, go to our website at New Beginnings Plural with the S, clc.org. And when you go into that, then go to that prayer request tab. Go to the prayer request tab and put your name and address, and we'll be certain that somebody from the ministry will get this book to you called Where Do I Go From? What Are Your Next Steps Now That You're Born Again? Yeah. So, congratulations and welcome to the family of God. We love you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, we're so excited for you, man. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I trust that you got a word from the Lord tonight, this yes, evening. Yes, hey, I don't know about you, but I preach myself happy. Hey. Amen. Glory to God. Well, it's opportunity to prosper time. It's time to give. Yeah. Amen. You know, the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto us good measure. Press down, shaking together, ain't running over. Shall men give unto our bosom. The word of God goes on further to say that God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving. And then I love what Malachi has to say in chapter 3 and 4. It said, bring ye all the tithes and offerings into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now herewith. Here with what? Your tithes and offerings. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive it, then he goes on to say, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Wow. I call that, those are the benefits of a tither. Amen. Man. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, we encourage you to give three. There are three ways that we encourage you to give. Number one, PayPal. Mm -hmm. You can go to newbeginningsplurallclc.org. Again, New Beginnings, plural, with an S, clc.org. Or second, you can cash out. Just go to New Beginnings, plural, clc. Well, then finally, if you just want to just mail it in, you can do that too. Mail it in at P.O. Box 320658. At P.O. Box 320658. That's Flowood, Mississippi, 39232. Amen. Well, I trust that you've done all that you're going to do. Regarding your tithes and your offerings, let's hold up our offering to our great high priest and let us agree in faith. Heavenly Father, once again, we do count on the honor and privilege to give this day. And Lord, we thank you that as we give, that you'll give back to us good measure, press down, singing together and running over, yes, so men Lord. give back to our bosom. And Lord, right now, we claim right now the benefits of a tither. Father, we thank you that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we ain't got room enough to receive it. And Lord, we thank you that you'll rebuke the devourer for our sake. And Lord, we just send forth our angels now and cause our return to come unto us for we believe that we receive a 100-fold return in this lifetime. Wealth and riches will be in our house. And Father, not only that, but we see all our debt canceled. Yes. We see it all paid off. Father, we just thank you. Our investments are increasing. Yes. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, all that agree, shout it. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't forget, we've started our 10-day Daniel fast. January 17th through the 26th. If you got all, if you forgot all about it, you can start today or start tomorrow, I should say. Start tomorrow morning. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Again, as I said earlier, you know, fasting don't move God. 
but it gets you in a position to receive from God. And if you started your fast, but you kind of messed up, don't get over into bondage. God knows your heart. Amen. Just start in the morning. Amen. And also, don't forget about our wonderful manual that I put together. I mean, it's classy. I, I mean, it's really nice. You can do your confessions as you've prayer. You praying and you're fasting. You got your confession book. My God, you can't go wrong. Amen. So you want to make sure that you're doing that. Also, don't forget that our next upcoming uh, in-person church service is Sunday, February the 6th. Sunday, February the 6th at 11 o'clock a.m. at our new location. Not renting or leasing. No, we bought this new location at 136 Byron Parkway. 136 Byron Parkway there in Byron, Mississippi. And if you just can't make it, don't forget, we got Facebook Live. We got a lot of people outside of Mississippi watching on Facebook Live. So you don't want to forget it. And then finally, don't forget, starting in February, we're going to start hosting two in-person church services. We will start hosting two in-person church services. That will be every first and second Sunday of each month. And yes, we still will have Facebook Live. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's been wonderful once again, giving you the word of God. Hallelujah. And we just thank you so much. Don't forget this coming Sunday that we'll be on Facebook Live at 10 o'clock a.m. sharp. At 10 o'clock a.m. sharp. Yeah. Amen. And so we'll see you there. But don't forget, there is an uprising of the body of Christ.